Thank you for joining us. I'm Bill Zogby from the DeBakey Heart Center in Houston, Texas. And with me today are Drs. Tom Porter from the University of Nebraska and Dr. Tom Marwick from the University of Queensland in Australia. We're here to discuss a recent study that Dr. Porter has just published in Jack Imaging regarding contrast echocardiography with dobutamine for detection of coronary artery disease and particularly looking at the subendocardial area. Tom, tell us a little more about your study and, why, and your findings. In this study, Bill, we looked at the uh, analysis of myocardial perfusion and wall thickening in patients with left anterior descending coronary stenosis that were significant, greater than 50% in diameter. We found that in a significant number of these patients, we were able to induce a perfusion defect, although overall wall thickening or transmural wall thickening appeared to be normal. In these patients, uh, the majority of the perfusion defects that we induced were subendocardial. And this allowed us to look, because of the transmural border created by the contrast and the endocardial border uh, created by the contrast, uh, what wall thickening was doing in the subendocardium. Uh, in a significant percentage of these patients, we saw that wall thickening was abnormal in the subendocardium, even though overall transmural wall thickening appeared to be normal. This allows us to look now uh, with the re real-time perfusion technique at subendocardial wall thickening abnormalities that would otherwise be undetected if we did not have the ability to use intravenous contrast in real-time perfusion imaging. Tom, um you're writing an editorial about this because this is an important observation. Uh, what, what do you think about it? Where's the impact of this regarding the usual use of dobutamine echocardiography? Yeah, I think it is a, it's a very interesting observation on a couple of fronts. Um, the first is that uh, dobutamine echo has a little bit less sensitivity than exercise echo. And it could be an explanation for why there is a problem, particularly when the ventricle is unloaded at peak stress that the subepicardium is being recruited and really pushing the subendocardium in passively, even though the subendocardium is ischemic. So it could help us address that problem. And then on a more general front, I think it's very interesting that we now have an echo tool that could potentially tell us about subendocardial ischemia. So you see an advantage of increased sensitivity, but really at no expense in specificity. That's, that's the way I would read it too, Correct. Yes, I think that's true, that we see not only the benefit of the LV opacification in terms of detecting the, the, the border of the wall, but also telling us about subendocardial perfusion and also subendocardial thickening. So Tom, in your lab, is this what you use nowadays with dobutamine and how has it impacted, uh, how, how do you use it in your laboratory uh, currently? We use a real-time perfusion for all of our dobutamine stress echoes for the very reason that uh, Dr. Marwick pointed out is that if we don't have that ability to look at both perfusion and wall thickening we, at peak dobutamine stress, we believe we may be missing some patients that have significant coronary stenosis. We've shown in prior studies that prognosis is best if both myocardial perfusion and wall thickening are normal during dobutamine stress. And as Dr. Marwick pointed out, now we have a technique that allows us to detect subendocardial ischemia which really is not possible with other techniques because of the high resolution of echocardiography, especially real-time perfusion echocardiography. So do you see here an advantage just from using contrast in addition to regular dobutamine, not only for perfusion, but also for wall motion? I mean, do you see this as a, as a combination, almost a, a double benefit? Yes, I think a cardiologist needs to have both myocardial perfusion and wall thickening data Contrast in this setting, when used with real-time perfusion, gives us both of that, the nice border detection that we get from left ventricular opacification, and when we induce subendocardial ischemia, we have a transmural border that allows us to track subendocardial wall thickening changes. Wonderful. Uh, I really want to thank uh, both of you for joining us today. Uh, this has been a, a terrific uh, uh, advance in really the use of contrast in our detection of coronary disease using pharmacological stress testing. And thank you for joining us.